Well, folks, I'm not a Nintendo YouTuber, and I think this is a perfect example of this because Nintendo just proved me wrong. They made me look very foolish, and, you know, that's okay. When I'm wrong about something, it does not bother me at all. I prefer to be right, as many people do, but if I'm wrong about something, I like to bring it to your guys' attention and... Damn, man, I, I was pretty, pretty wrong about this. You might remember a little while ago, we talked about a brand new Nintendo Switch emulator called Suyu. Now, this was an offshoot of another emulator called Yuzu. And, of course, Yuzu found themselves in a legal battle with Nintendo. Now, to skip the nitty-gritty of it, basically, Nintendo came after Yuzu, said, we're shutting you down, we're taking you to court. Yuzu puffed out their chest and said, yeah, do it. And then they were like, oh, wait, no, don't do it. And they settled with nintendo they had to pay all this money back they had to take down yuzu and all sorts of stuff from that but it's kind of like a hydra you cut off one head and seven more heads come out of course there already is the emulator ryu jinx out there i actually have a video about ryu jinx on my channel i had no idea it was like the second most successful video i've ever done on this channel but ryu jinx still hasn't been hit with anything so suyu came along and they were doing everything by the book or so they claim they were tied in with a um legal expert that was helping them they were taking baby steps with it there was no funding like there was with yuzu there wasn't any sort of things like that it was just sort of using what yuzu brought to the table and making their own sort of interpretation on it and from all the articles that were out there that suyu themselves were sort of promoting it seemed like nintendo really couldn't do anything legally because legally speaking what they were doing wasn't exactly incriminating you couldn't have the product keys you had to dump your own product keys and stuff like that now granted it's not very hard to download a product key but if they're not providing it with to the consumer they're not asking for money from the consumer they're not illegally hosting roms like yuzu was found to be doing it seemed like this was going to be just a, another nintendo switch emulator much like ryu jinx and doing it by the book but well well i was wrong because nintendo switch sue you emulator offline following dmca takedown and here you can see a little image of it here i might actually I might actually use that image that's uh, i don't know i don't like the the line around it you gotta gotta clean that up a little bit just make it all black with the cu logo i will fix it up in post editing but it's been days since the first beta of the switch emulator suyu went live and the project is already facing some legal battles this new tool which is based on the source code of former yuzu emulator has been has today been removed by gitlab the site where it was hosted following a dmca a request now this is a website called overkill.wtf i kind of like that name that, that's a kind of cool name so make sure you guys go show him and chris, or the website and chris brandrick some love on this article but getting taken down already that's not a good thing because that just means nintendo is up at it again shriners i already gave you money i that's the one thing about get, hold on Hold on, slight offshoot here. That's the one thing about giving money to these charities and stuff. Like the little Shriners ad came on TV one night around Christmas time. And I was like, man, this little kid, he's making me sad. And so I gave some money. And then they always like follow up. They're like, you want to give more money? You want to give more money? It's like, bro, I already gave you money. Like, ah, that bothers me. Like, just... I'll give you money when, when I when I feel it in my heart. Anyways, a GitLab spokesperson speaking directly with Overkill shared that they had received a DMCA takedown notice from a representative of the rights holder and such followed their standard process for such requests. As a result, the project page has been removed along with any and all associated accounts of those who contributed to the Suyu project getting locked. So... Suyu was essentially being hosted on GitLab. That's where you got it. People were then, you know, putting it onto GitLab. Users were putting it onto GitLab. More than likely the people that were creating and working on the emulator itself. And then Nintendo came along and filed a DMCA claim with GitLab saying, hey, this and you know this inflicts on our private property on our proprietary our ip whatever it may be you know we're the rights holder and they took it down now that is actually a very real thing during the whole metroid dread situation that i went through they literally have individuals who seek out these people and will send them threatening letters and stuff like that like i had my fair share 
of them from Nintendo, but you know, it just that happened in that case that YouTube sided with me because I really didn't do anything wrong. But in a situation like this, where we're talking about emulators and emulation, you know, hosting of the emulator itself, GitLab, they're not gonna go back and forth. They're not gonna do any of this. They, they don't necessarily care. They're, they're just a site to host things. They're not gonna go to bat for their people that are putting up stuff. They're not gonna look into that because, I mean, why would you, especially with a, DME, a DMCA claim? So, to you as a former Yuzu emulator to fork of it following the legal action from Nintendo was quickly shut down with the domain source code and any associated assets swiftly handed over to Nintendo. As such, it's a reasonable conclusion to make that Nintendo could well be the aforementioned rights holder of the now dead Yuzu project. And I mean, that's just kind of putting two and two together, especially if we're talking about source code, because if you're using parts of the source code, you know, that's how a lot of ROM hacks kind of come under, you know, scrutiny from Nintendo themselves, because yes, it's a ROM hack, it's changing up things, but it's still using lines of code from the original game. So that's kind of why you see Nintendo once in a while just get a wild hair up their ass and go after these ROM hacks because they own the IPs, they own code of that sort of stuff. So more than likely they are the rights holder. Upon launching user, the developers were keen to stress that this emulator project was firmly anti-piracy and was the only be or is to be used only with legitimately backed up switch roms oh yeah of course of course following the interest in the yuzu story any such attempts to continue the project would attract immediate attention with suyu being a fork of the now notorious yuzu tool it's probably most inevitable that this new project would face problems and then you could see the uh i guess the dmca claim here um uh, we've determined that you forked a public repo against what we previously received a DMACA notice. If you'd like to regain access to your account, you're required to delete the project from your account. That project, of course, being uh, sue you. So, I mean, really, that's that's clearly where it's coming from with this. Despite GitLab's comment on requests coming via a representative of the rights holder, it is worth noting the CU team themselves have said that they are seemingly unaware of the original source of this DMCA request. I got news for you, sue you. It's probably Nintendo, and it's probably because they are now owners of the rights to Yuzu, meaning that the source code and stuff, the stuff that you used in this emulator, it's part of what they own now. And when Nintendo owns something, they, they're they like a freaking mother kitten. Get away from my cats. I don't know. I guess that's what mother cats do. I'm allergic to cats. But they're going to, you know, they're going to stand on their ground with this. With something like Ryu Jinx, they're not in control of that emulator. They have not attacked that emulator. They haven't threatened that emulator, at least that we know of, and gotten, you know, the source code to be under their umbrella. With Yuzu, it's obviously under their umbrella. But... You know, once again, we got to go back to the Hydra head mentality here. It's like, at what cost? You know, you know, is, is it worth going after all these emulators? Because at the end of the day, the problem to me has never been the emulator itself because people are going, it, it's, they're not, you're not losing sales from this. The people that are pirating your games, you're not losing sales from them. But even the bigger picture is how do these games get so readily available in the open when reviewers get their copies now with princess peach not many reviewers got copies of that game which is coming out today when you're watching this but the game was still up like three days ago on a website that i look at nintendo switch roms to see you know what games have been released on this website because i like to keep track of that stuff like people probably think i emulate a lot of switch stuff i i, I really don't like i made that emulator video and yeah, you know, Tears of the Kingdom. I definitely played a bunch of that via emulation before the game came out, but I still bought the game. I just wanted to experience it and see what, what the game was all about. But, you know, there's so many different branches you could go with this. Um, you know, is it worth it for Nintendo? Are they smart to do something like this? Is this bad press? Are they protecting their IP? But it all boils down to me is how these games are getting out into the open and why can you know, $300 mini PCs run a vast majority of these games at perfect resolutions and perfect frame rates. 
Like, why aren't you doing any sort of encryption on the software itself? And I'm not saying DeNuvo, definitely not saying DeNuvo with an, an online check-in being needed to be made, but you have to figure out something from this. Like with, with Yuzu, you should have been like, hey, how are you circumventing our stuff? What can we do? Like, that's what a lot of these companies do. That's what even the, like the government does. When somebody hacks into the government or something and it's like a big deal, sometimes they hire these people to beef up their security stuff. And it just seems like Nintendo just doesn't care to do that. And if you don't care to fix things, then history is just going to repeat itself. But let me know what you think of this in the comments section down below. Are you surprised that Suyu has been removed? And like I said, man, I was completely wrong about that. I thought they were doing everything by the book. But, you know, when you break it down, nothing is guaranteed and nothing is, you know, no, nothing is uh, nothing is written in stone when it comes to Nintendo. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share, hit the bell as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.